So hello and welcome back to another video. Today we're just gonna let's just have a quick breeze and delve into the actual Moogle and later Indian rupee coins. So these are all silver coins, although the composition does vary. Okay, so earlier ones that we have uh, are the Moogle ones, but the Sir Empire first issued the rupee in 1545, around about that date. So here we have two, uh, one from Sia, I can't pronounce his name, one from Muhammad Shah. So these are about 17th century. And here we have the inscription of the ruler's name. I oh, know that's on this side. And we have the regal year. So both of them are regal seven. So the date is there. So that is, and as you can see, the design's pretty much the same, the mint down below. So and those coins start at about $20 each. But later on, so this is a coin of Shah Alarms, Regal Year is a frozen date. So this is uh, 45, which will make it 1805. And these coins are not too common. And down below we have the mint is for a cupboard. But these were minted in Calcutta. And they were issued in the Bengal region called the Bengal Presidency. And these are all milled. So obviously the British introduced milled coins to the Indian subcontinent. And these coins probably cost about $50 to $100. Not a cheap coin, but also actually not too bad. And the silver contents were banned out. Ten dollars and it's ninety point nine percent. So pretty much ninety one percent silver. Then we have the later Indian silver coins. So here we have Coin Victoria. This is also probably fifty to hundred dollar coin. Eighteen forty, but issued by the East India Company, which had the at the time monopoly of British coinage. Although they were pretty much run by the British government. And because they had a lot of problems in 1862, they, the British just started issuing one rupee coins. Maybe I'll turn the light on and get better. Yeah, they started issuing one rupee coins without the British East India Company motto on it. So that is. And these ones are. 92.5% silver and the mintage so for these coins we don't have a mintage so pretty much at the time you could still have gone to the actual any of the actual mints and handed in silver and they would have coined it probably at like five percent discount which means they keep five percent of the silver so that's how you paid them this one was issued between 1833 and 35 it's uh, a KM78, so that just means a Krauss catalog. And it is different from uh, 77, in which all these lines that go up are straight. On 77, they will be slightly curved and probably fat at the top. And also, uh, these dots on the stars are thicker on 77. So that's how you know uh, that coin. So for this coin, there is two different types for 1840. So this one has the Queen's name and Queen going up the top. And then there's another version which Victoria's on this side, Queen's on this side, which that was issued between 1840 and 1849. This one here is a single year issue. Uh, it is okay. So it's not 92.5, it's 917, so it's 91.7% silver. There's a nice effigy of Queen Elizabeth. Uh -huh, uh, Queen Victoria. And that's a William Ryan uh, design. And there is no mintage figures for these, but there are quite a variety of uh, variations in the actual coins. 
So these lighter rupee coins that we issued, you have a lot of variation in the detail of the actual flowers. Not really the lettering. And also, when you drop them like that, it's bad. But it's my coin, so I don't care. Okay, you have variation in the actual uh, dress that you can see there. And do we have mintage figures for 1862? Uh, no, not really. Uh, not for all the varieties because uh, it's just changed so many that oh they they this and also the record keeping at the time was a bit lax so the minty triggers start from 1874 so here we have uh, another coin so that's 1881 and this one yeah. So we do have a mint figure that's down below. So this is C for Calcutta. And on the back, looks like we have, so you count this, you've got one, two, three. I think that's counted as four. So four uh, rosettes or whatever you call it. That's also the same. If we, okay, got another coin. It's pretty much the same. Okay, so this one's got three and a half. So you've got one, two, three, three and a half. So there's one type of obverse. Uh, and then you've got other types of uh, the actual reverses. But a prominent figure is uh, just uh, this bunch of flowers that goes um, up here. You check that for design variations, which makes it very interesting. So what are the mintage figures for 1881? So this is quite low. We only have about two and a half million of these minted. So that means this is a for Indian rupees. It's actually a key date coin. So this is probably like a hundred to two hundred uh, dollar coin. Then we have eighteen ninety two. So all of these do have you know Calcutta and Bombay mint or Mumbai, as well as probably variations in the actual design. So 1892, yeah, it's this one. No, it looks like it's just standard. Uh, so that one is a mintage. If the B is raised, which I think it is, then probably 72 million. If the B is in Qs, it's probably included uh, without the actual mint mark. So, because I don't see B, I'd say it's probably raised, which means, oh no, see it's a bit hard to actually tell. Okay, so, oh no, it's B and Q, so this has a mintage of 72 million, yeah, quite a common coin, uh, probably 20 to $40 for uh, that one. Then we have the last year of the actual issuance of this coin, and this is 1901. It looks like B and Q's up top as well. So quite a nice coin. And as you can see, it's uh, toned as well, which should be pretty normal because these would have been used quite a lot. So B and Q's, 130 million of these were minted. So not really hard to get coin. Okay, so that's the Queen Victoria. I do so have some other ones. So I've got 1877. So all these would depend on the actual condition of the coin. So this one's not that good, probably very fine, quite toned. Uh, but then you need to put in context of the actual mintage. And, you know, it's like 95 million for being accused. Or B dot. Uh, doesn't have a minty trigger so 1877 is quite a common year okay so after 1877 then we have a different design from Edward the AA7 so these ones shouldn't be too uh, scarce to get so they were issued from 1903 to 1910 obviously 1902 is scarce so if you get a 1902 then it's probably uh, a trial piece or more likely it's a fake coin so 995 
uh, without the mint mark, which I think this one is, it has a mintage of 51 million. So obviously a common coin, but they sell for probably about 20 to 40 dollars. 1906, we have a mintage of about 100 to 150 million for both mints each. There's about 250 million of these minted. Well, most of those would have been uh, melted down. And then we have 1907. Yeah, so this doesn't look like it's got the mint mark. So that's about 81 million of these are minted. So and this one's probably VF condition. And then the other two are probably VF. Anyway, that's a quite a nice design, but you know, they sell for about 20 to 40 dollars depending on the actual condition. Then we have George's Fifth. So, this one's been clean, you can see why the straw had the lines on this coin. And this is a 1919, but it looks like the 1919 has a problem with the actual. Looks like it's re engraved. So I need to look that up. So then we have the issue that was issued during the Second World War. So these were designs from 1938. Uh, there is a large and a small bust of the actual King George VI. Uh, these are all small, but the ever variation you can see is the rim. So this is a thick rim, thin rim. Although these two are classed as the same design, they can probably be separated. Uh, and there's also lots of variations in the reverse side. So you've got this lower down here, totally different design. Uh, even this uh, looks like to be a lotus, uh, used a different design. But these are both dot mints that are both Kolkata, about 1944, 45. And the 1944, most of them have uh, thick rims. And Struggled to actually find any with uh, smaller rims, but these are only 50% silver and the mass produced. You're talking about like 150 to 200 million of these coins minted in all the variations, so that's those ones. And then we have other coins issued uh, by the princely states, so by you know 1940s, only the Hyderabad which is the coin I have here, one rupee. This one's dated in 1337, Islamic calendar. Can't remember what that is in uh, Western years. And Usman Ali Khan. And that doesn't have the one on the reverse. He has the uh, princely palace on the uh, back front of the coin. And that symbolizes Hyderabad itself. So these ones are about 40 to 50 dollars each. Then later, so these are second world war versions. And these ones have the one to distinguish it from other denominations. Then we have the regal year, so this is 32. And these are both dated the same. So uh, pretty much what you'll be looking for is variations in the design. But I don't think Hyderabad has that many variations, not compared to the French Estates. And the US, so this coin is actually in a lot better condition than this one. Based on the wear on the actual temp, uh, palace. So, and uh, yeah, these are 1361. So, those are the type of rupee coins you can get. Obviously, you can get lots of different coins over various 500-year time period. And even now, you can uh, get different variations in the one rupee coin that India currently issues, which is just a steel coin. Oh, here you go. Portuguese India. One a scooter, 1959. Anyway, thank you very much for watching this video. Let me know what you think about one rupee coins if you want me to expand on this topic and probably go through the variations that they do have in uh, uh, the issuance. Thank you and goodbye.